John, good morning, bro. Kamusta? How are you? Morning, man. Kahit ba, nabalitaan ko na, kinigaw sa podcast mo, meron ko ng bagong term ngayon, ha? Ang mga makabele. <laughs> mga ka makabele. <laughs> mga ka good makabele. Ewan ko, ewan ko kung ano to, kung, kung gano'n ka deep itong reference na to and kung familiar yung viewers natin. Si makabele, <laughs> si Tupac yun, eh. The rapper. Dati kasi, <laughs> right, right, right. Ng, dati kasi nagaroon siya ng alter ego. Ayaw na niya tawag yung sarili niyong Tupac. <laughs> yung pangalan na si Makavela. So baka na pang... Uh, Baka yeah, naman ako gusto ulit si... Uh, he's one of the bards of our time, di ba? Napaka-profound right, na pang-reference. Right. Tupac reference pala. <laughs> Oo nga, no? True, true artistry ang rin-reference itong mga ito. Huwag natin itong... Si, si. Huwag natin ito. Huwag natin ito. Pangalanan na natin para mabash tayo, no? So, obviously, ang context ng mga kamakabela ay isang... Isang napaka-loyalist vlogger na, oy based in ten sa US, ha? hindi yata malayo sa'yo. I think California din siya. Uh, yeah. Itong et, si ate... Si Ate ay medyo super loyalist but ngayon super anti-BBM loyalist which is really a weird, creepy combo. So sabi nga ni Mark Gombo, we're in a weird world whereby Richard Haydarian is being cited to protect BBM <laughs> and, like, and and Maharlika is cited to attack BBM. So like, I don't know what's going on here, bro. You tell me. So ito mga kamakabele natin, hindi natin alam mga kamay. <laughs> Parang Leloy, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this Parang Leloy. Um, so, are you surprised by the turn of events in the sense that we're seeing a lot of these bloggers that we're expecting to rally behind BBM and all of that, that they're now kind of going against him or pro Tatay? And then, oh, by the way, I was I saw on Twitter si Sasot ay nag uh, in invite yata bilang witness a Senate hearing by Tita Aimi. Oh, oh yun my God. level niya ngayon, di ba? Yung level niya, di ba? So, yun. <laughs> What the world, di ba? Grabe, nagtitindi talaga nito mga to. To testify on ETCA, yung mga gano'n. Hindi ko alam kung totoo yan or something like that. I just saw someone, uh, parang tinatag nila, bakit wala si Hidarian? Ito yung mga BBM people <laughs> na pro-ETCA. Gusto nila andun ako. Parang, <laughs> parang, dude, this is weird. Like, what's going on here? Like, Pero, alam mo, related to, plus yung kwento ko dyan is, yung article ko about Ninoy Aquino, laging sinasahid yes. ng mga pro-Marcos. Yes. Di ba? So I wrote that article in 2010 if I'm I'm not mistaken so yung mga Marcos restoration is since right. 2010 ginagamit yung research ko para siraan si Dino right. Pero hindi naman nila binabasa sa proper context yung article ko. And may right, mga dilak right. na nagalit sa akin na sinulat ko yun no 2010 pero hindi naman nila binabasa yung, yung context pero kasi yung article na yun well sorry I'm getting ahead of myself. Pero yung article na yun, we'll talk about it later. I think comes up with incontrovertible proof na si Dino Aquino was really allied with the Communist Party of the Philippines. Right. From from its very inception. And di lang naman ako nagsabi niyan, pero I just I just added to it because I found a couple of new doc, State Department documents and did a couple of new interviews. Right, right. Now, obviously, uh, medyo nag-advance tayo ng mag-isip. Uh-huh. No? So, I, just, just going back to this, bro. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> preview, preview, preview. Alam ko kasi, mahirap na po mga ADHD nandito. Like, let's control this, bro. Now, going back to this, bago tayo, we'll go to the meat of discussion. I want to talk about this because the, the reason why itong makavela, makavela na yan, ay medyo sineseryoso ko na. I mean, as much as I, I you know, I, I I'm just having a good time with this, is because... This is increasingly being connected to not only a fight among bloggers, pro BBM DDS bloggers. Actually, wala naman siya pro BBM, no. Kaya yung yung department ng communications, yung presidential pinilaki commission, na, pinilaki pinilaki like uh, alam ba yun, parang 97 assistant secretary, 47 bisag na joke lang. But and, and like, no, no, but but because this is being related uh Leloy dun sa growing discussions about a siblings rivalry. Is hmm. From your perspective, I have I've already said on the record, like on television, about what's my take on this. But I want to take your point as a historian because I know just like Ambeth, you have seen yung mga sinulat ng tatay nila about who sila talaga yung apple of their eye, and we know that Aimi was really the alpha, no, as far as the siblings are concerned. And we clearly see that in Maiden Malacanya, I Maiden Marites, uh, anong state of play. Now, what do you think about this sibling strife? Is this real? What do you think is going on here? Ndami ko na narinig na cheese mist yun to in including meron ako na rinig. Well, I mean no, okay, ganito bro, not just me. Like on the record, from, yeah, from, 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 many... well, the, the, pero I think it yung cheese mix is telling about yung mindset ng mga tao, di ba? Okay. Yung pinag-usapan. Okay. Okay. Hindi siya totoo. Parang right. telling about it's it tells you about a discursive atmosphere ng content. Right. So, nang ko na rinig na cheese mix, yung yung pinaka-interesting na cheese mix na narinig ko is 
this comes from a reputable academic who spoke to a reputable CIA source. Jeez. Na si Apolo kay daw, yung matandang Marcos, nung namatay sa Hawaii, namatay daw yun ng may samang na, na may sama ng loob kay Bongbong. Oh. Over, over I think yun na, yung palang party boy behavior. Yung, ah, right. Disappointment. Yung kanyang, yung kanyang disposition, yung kanyang medyo happy-go-lucky dis- disposition that really uh, didn't take things seriously. seriously. Yeah. The way I me does maybe. And mukha naman talaga si I me yung mas mas seryoso and si I me uh, yung yung ano. Into not, it. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's more into it. You know, frankly, looks like Bongbong Marcos is like more fun to hang out with and I me is just like kind of boring and a bit Olympico too eight type. I don't know. Diba? Yeah, pero, yeah, I pero so, so kung gano'n talaga yung chismis for the longest time, like kung meron kung totoo nga pala talaga yun, that's quite telling to me. And then of course, yung sama ng loob ni Ami Marcos is, is obviously best seen in Made in Malacanang. Right. Where, okay. diba? Where he, that, 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 that notion of bongets and bongets pa yung tawag sa kanya dun, diba? Prodigal son talaga. The, prodigal, the prodigal son. son and the, the, the party boy who made who broke his father's heart like it's kind of very it's kind of very pronounced in in that you know and then you know i heard this i kind of heard this rumor also na hanggang hawaii may sama ng loob yung matanda dun sa hey junior um okay let me push back against that a little bit bro no and then i want to get your point of view uh, of course our common friend uh, uh manuel kezon the third uh, mlq has written interesting stuff about this which is he just he has described uh, marcos as the last hawk because if you look at it during so the last days, last hawk last hawk right remember during the last days of of uh, you know the regime no the marcos dictatorship uh, bpm was in military suit no naka camouflage and all of that and according to mlq the uh, third and of course a lot of documents he was the one who wanted the much more decisive muscular response by the father it was the father who actually had second thoughts he wanted he really wanted a way out na the exit ramp na inanap niya but the son was kind of like dad let's go for it so i don't know it doesn't so parang yung argument na hanggang last moment the father was you know a bit disappointed no? but the thing is until the last moment of the the regime it was the son who actually was stepping up to the plate and that's what doesn't doesn't come out at all in maiden marites i'm sorry maiden malacañang no which is yeah, yeah. the transformation of the son no into this kind of a strong decisive figure or at least an aggressive decisive figure in which his father was Al- alam mo, alam mo, it's it's it, it you know, both could be true and then both one could be true one could be false like the story i'm telling malay mo ba kung saan nakuha nung CIA officer yun malay mo kausap niya si Amy right and that's mm-hmm. that's exactly. why the sources niya ba that, that, exactly. that, that impression i don't know this is this is just gossip and of course gossip is not evidence like as a historian of course gossip is not evidence but you can use gossip to kind of figure context. out context. Yeah, yeah. a context in what people are thinking or what people are concerned with. Pero hindi, linawin natin, pag sinabi kong gossip is is not, it can be used, I'm not saying na totoo yung gossip. I'm saying you can use the gossip to find out hints about what could be true. And yeah. so that particular example I'm citing, that could be false, but that could also also reveal something about the mindset of the people in the Marcos family at that time. It could reveal right. something. If it's coming from Aimee Marcos, it right. can come, it can reveal her mindset, which is, which is very important. You know, like, of course, this is extremely gendered. Like, I can relate in a way. You and then, bro, the gender Marcos thing, yeah. I mean, I mean, Marcos. Kasi obviously, yung tatay nila sobrang sexist. Diba? Tatay nila sobrang sexist. This was a guy who would measure Imelda Marcos's food, right? And would comment about her weight all the time. I, not, so I didn't know was, that. Really? I mean, he was he was very controlling of women, and 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 so and yet he believed, of course, I think that the person who would carry forward this legacy should be the man, right? The man he named Junior. after him, Ferdinand, right? Yeah. Ferdinand Junior. Yeah. So, so of course, I mean. I mean, of course, I mean, of course, uh, partly a victim, I guess, of the patriarchy of a of a very patriarchal macho man. This is like one of the most macho presidents we've ever had. Oh, so, man. yeah, I mean, kawawa, uh, kawawa, but at the same time, you know, di talaga na awa sa pamilya nito because you know, yeah, you got exiled, yeah, nagawaay kayo, pero grabe ang yaman yun, hindi niyo pa binabalik yung pera, di ba? So I can sympathize to some degree, but ultimately, my God, di mga awa niyo. It's nothing. You ma pin, you ma pin that that anan you as a family. Wala, wala, wala yeah, it, it, you know the, the, the suffering of the Filipino people oh. and everything like that. Oh. No, I mean, I, I absolutely agree with you, Lelo, because 
you know, as, as Adam Tooze would say, like our good friend, right? Like, oh, you know, like something like narratives move markets in the same way gossips mm -hmm. move history, right? So ah, yeah, yeah. If, if there's a there's an era whereby you have a lot of gossip about the king dying, even if it's not true that the king is unwell, that in itself creates its own political reality. You no, know? it creates an mm -hmm. intersubjective reality. You no, know? okay, I'm Halegai. That's that's why I say gossips have a value in historical analysis or political analysis for that matter. Ako naman, yeah. I mean, it, it, ano, itong hidwa na itong magkapatid, how, how far do you think it's gonna go? I mean, you know, meron, yeah. ng, meron ng legislative, marami ng legislative fights, for example, many times when nagde-dissent yeah. yung Senado yung, uh, yung si Amy over the policy of her, of right. her trade policy, actually, yung mga dissensions right, right. niya. But how far do you think it's gonna go? Not, nothing na political, interesting, nothing na political, mostly trade yung mga dissensions niya sa Senado. Right. How far do you think it's gonna go? Okay. Um. So, I'm going to be consistent with what I'm saying. So I'm not going to say different things in different platforms because I really believe this. For me, obviously, there's first the element of temperament. I'm is much more comfortable with feisty, spirited commentaries on politics while mm. Bibi is much more... So, so sometimes oh, that creates oh. some sort of artificial difference. So why is it strong ng stance like this? So for instance, look at uh, uh, stance ni, uh, uh Marcus Jr. during the commemoration of ETSA. No, he brings the wreath. Mr. Unity, right? Abang si Aimee, she will throw some, you know, spicy comments here and there, you know, even criticizing her own son, governor, blah, blah. So the first is there's a question of temperament. Second, I think there's actually misunderstanding. So for instance, on the issue of RCEP, you no, know, uh, uh, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, the argument is Aimee abstained sa Senate because ayun kay Aimee, meron akong ano, concern sa mga magsasaka. So, mas grassroots daw siya. All right? Habang yung kapatid na more economic, so is looking at macro gains. Well, mm -hmm. actually, base sa alam ko, Lele, because I was, able, I was supposed to do an interview with BBC on this, no? Uh, Philippines RCEP vote. So, the Philippines is actually one of the last countries, if not the last countries to ratify the RCEP precisely yeah. because BBM had second thoughts about this. Precisely because BBM was worried that once RCEP comes in, kind of similar to how Walden Bell, you and our friends would argue, right? This liberalization is going to hammer our already besieged agriculture sector. So obviously, in the end, Marcos Jr. gave in to the technocrats, including some good people like Balisakan, right? Who strongly argued yeah. that on, on, a net, on a net level, there are more gains than losses and that the losses can be mitigated and that we cannot afford to be left out of this because the Philippines yeah. is increasingly being pushed out of supply chains and all. So for me, I, I miss abstention is actually not too different from Marcos administration dragging its foot and becoming yes. the last or among last one. So actually, both of them kind of abstain. Saka ideologically, but, ideologically, mapapansin mo talaga yung magkapatid na yan or yung Marcos family. Meron talagang protectionist tendencies eh. Pero meron economic na tendencies exactly. na nakuha nila sa tatay nila. Naalala ko nga nung first week ni Marcos, I mean, he, he gave a speech in front of the economic managers and he said something related to food security, food independence, Absolutely. and ganyan. Absolutely. And then, nakikita mo yung mga technocrats behind him mumingiway ng konti because obviously yeah. they're not comfortable with that language. Yeah. They're, all, they're comfortable with the language of liberalization and free trade. Or Marcos, with you under Aquino. Things with yeah. the higher under Duterte. Yeah, right? Marcos is like Marcos is a creature. Like he's trying to imitate his father. He is a creature of the sixties and seventies in a way. Developmental. And yeah. In, in, in impulses na ganon. You, you, they're probably coming from his father also. And same thing with with Amy. And bro, um, he studied in Oxford and Wharton, so he has a little bit of a familiarity with economics. And remember, he studied there in what? 60s, 70s, 80s, right? Mm -hmm. So this was the era where there were a lot of discussions about developmental states and the success of South Korea, NICs, etc. Mm -hmm. You know, I know people are so dismissive of BBM, they underestimate him, but come on, dude. If you spend at least a semester in Oxford or a semester in Wharton, siguro naman, di ba? You learn a thing or two, di ba? Then let's say Tatay Digong who barely got out of his, you know, mayor's office or whatever. No? So, so my point is, in fairness, I think BBM has some intellectual leaning uh, towards uh, not naman protectionism, but proactive state, proactive state intervention. Uh, developmental yes. state policy. Kitang kita yan dun sa sona niya. For instance, if you look at the State of the Nation address of Marcus Jr., he talks about moratorium on debt payment for farmers. He talks about problems with the land reform. He talks about the need for... Now, obviously, you can say talk lang yan, but di ba, Lelo, yung talk lang, yung hindi yun, yun, nagawa ng ibang presidente yan eh. Karamihan ng presidente, new liberal lang mag-isip eh. Buksan natin competition, everything will be fine. But no, uh, this guy, Marcus Jr., was much more forceful in emphasizing that. So in short, 
I think both abstained. Marcus was abstaining, but he had no choice. Eventually, you know, the technocrats and business community said, let's go for it because we need market access. We cannot lose it. So I mean, it's not actually too different from the brother on, on, on the RCEP issue. I think both of them have similar nationalist bent, rather than a developmental nationalist bent. The reason why that can't be acknowledged is because on the left, there's really this narrative of Marcos as the father of Philippine neoliberalism. As yung uh, yeah, because, because of Sinasikat, which is which is actually a very difficult argument to make. You can argue that he mismanaged the economy, that's fine. But to argue that he was neoliberal, and here's actually where, where I have huge yeah. agreement with our friend JC Punong Bayan, and he makes the argument that the, uh, under no circumstances can you call that neoliberal because it was an attempt at developmentalism, right? And ang, ang, ang din ng state intervention. Like, for example, they say that the depreciation of the peso, my, my favorite topic, they say that that's neoliberal, for example. Right. Well, that wasn't neoliberal because you depreciated the peso so you could spend more. Remember that under a currency peg, limited mm -hmm. you must spend more because the amount of money circulating has to correspond has to has to be is, is effectively limited by the fact na pag sumobra yung money na nag-circulate bibigay yung currency peg dahil mag, mag, right. magmumura masyado yung currency right. more relative the value has a yeah exactly right. Right. so yeah. that comes from that comes from the gold standard principle and actually yeah. how can the how can getting rid of the currency peg being pro be be, be pro imperialist pro neoliberal when in fact the currency peg of 2 is to 1 peso that was imposed to us by the united states in 1902 as a product of U.S. imperialism mm -hmm. and defended by the United States government until the 1940s, right? Imposed on us and defended until the 1940s. So when Marcos fi finally get, got rid of all currency pegs with the U.S., they say that that's a product of the IMF. And I just saw that said in the newspaper by an esteemed economist mm -hmm. like last week. And then they kind of make the argument that that's the only world. That, 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 that just doesn't make any sense. You can call him a crook. He was. But don't call him a neoliberal because hindi talaga it's just like conceptually wrong. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so, and so now, of course, and, and so, so every time the left, the Philippine left, the Philippine nationalist left has has kind of has to agree with Marcos. It's uncomfortable. Like, okay, see, who are the people who, who are the only two people who opposed RCEP? Risa Ontiveros and I mean no, no, Marcos. No, no. No, I mean abstain. Risa, Risa. Yeah, who, yeah. Who, who did not vote rather. Exactly. Yeah. I Marcos and Risa Ontiveros, and yeah. you know that's 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 uncomfortable, but at the same time it makes sense because there is really dirigism protectionism in the Marcos right. narrative. Right. But bro, actually, the, the reason Nalaman go I mean abstained was because Teddy Cassino on Twitter actually thanked I or something like that because of that issue. Right. Mm. I and Teddy had a lot of back and forth on Twitter over the uh Etka issue, right? You know, you know, I mean, the usual old left arguments. So I kind of gave a more post-left argument on this issue. But don't know RCEP. Oh, interesting. We all kind of agree on this. Ako ganito, bro. First of all, wow, talaga binabasa mo lahat ng sinulat ni JC. I, I'm not updated on what's what's being written out there. No, and then pinag-usapan na, pinag namin yun. And, and actually, you know, binasa ko naman yung libro niya, yung yung debunk, yung debunking myths. Oh, ganda naman. I may access ka. Eh. What is that? Is that based on his essays or something like that? Uh, parang bilis no, naman. No, that's na a, na. Usually that's books a, that's take two hours. Two, two years, sorry. Two years to come out. I mean, like, that was big. I think matagal na yun. Matagal na yun. Tinabaho yun. Okay. So, congratulations to him. Anyway, yeah. going back to this, bro. Ako, um, I mean, as I said, diba? I'm glad economists are doing history. In the same way, I hope people also respect historians doing economic history. I'm, I'm, I'm consistent with, with what I'm saying. I'm not throwing shades or anything like that. I think some people were, because uh, I'm always sarcastic and shady, right? Literally shady now. But no, no, I meant it in a good way. I hope di tayo tayo mag -turfing. You know, I'm, I'm all good for, you know, economists giving tips on how to fight disinformation and making our democracy better. In the same way, I hope the economists are more open to political scientists and historians making reason based on world class literature world class authors and and experts now anyway going back to this can talk bro first of all remember new liberalism is not monolithic there are phases of evolution you can even say they're like new liberalism 1.0 new liberalism 2.0 3.0 etc so new liberalism bro of 1990s is different from new liberalism of 1970s and 80s when it was just about to pick up at the expense of keynesianism so that's one argument i'm not completely disagreeing with you bro but i'm just saying i would i would have a slightly different take the second thing I would say is Marcus Jr. Marcus Sr. was kind of like Peron, right? Hybrid. 
mixing it up, mm -hmm. right? Here a little bit dirigist, uh, you know, protectionist, here a little bit open. So for instance, I, I think he gave sufficient leeway to more new liberal leaning technocrats to go, remember, what are the pillars of neoliberalism? Not trade liberalization, privatization, deregulation. These are, to simplify it, no? I think all of them, Marcos, I would give him a score of 40, 50 to 60% out of each of them. So he's not a full-fledged neoliberal, but I think there was sufficient amount of neoliberal uh, you know, uh, inputs. For instance, he was export-oriented industrialization, which is very different from what happened in South Korea. Yeah. yeah, in South Korea and all, whereby they first perfected the import, import substitution before they moved to export, right? So for me, I would say... On the balance, Marcos was at the least 50-50, new liberal, the regist, right? But I would say probably if you gave it more time, he would go more, you know, probably more new liberal than we would have wanted. But I completely agree also with you, bro, that the same way that I believe in on foreign policy, Marcos Sr. was far more dynamic and proactive and even successful than people recognize, right? So I had an interview with Romualdez, right? I mean... There's no one as influential in the you know the diplomacy of the Philippines today as, as Ambassador Maldes there in the US. So we had a fascinating discussion about it. But and I, I agree that on economic policy, Marcos Marcus Sr. was way smarter and way more unorthodox than people believe. Although I had some debate with Manon Frankie, because the late Manon Frankie actually uh, had direct interactions back in the day uh, when Marcos Sr. was giving briefings and all. I, I don't think he disagreed with me when I said. Well, my thing with Marcos Sr. is I think he was a good lawyer. He was a smart politician. But I think his economics was not as advanced as Park Chung-hee and others. Because Park Chung-hee really studied the Japanese case of late industrialization, late development. My sense is Marcos was not as familiar with that. So I agree with you that Marcos it was far more, let's say, unorthodox and interesting and nationalistic than many of our presidents later on. But I would say compared to his peers, Park Chung-hee, uh, Lee Kuan Yew, even Suharto and the Kuomintang people in Taiwan, I think he was mm, not as economically literate, I would say, in terms of understanding the demands of development in a post-colonial state, whereby you have to literally create your comparative advantage. And if you rely on ex export-oriented ind industrialization, you will be locked into uh, the uh, uh, into a kind of a Western-dominated uh, globalization game. Anyway, uh, all I'm saying is that I'm just putting a different twist and context to it. I, we can have a completely different podcast, uh, uh, you know, episode just on Marcos Senior's economic policy versus the Sun. But, but, so bro, going back to the question, where I believe there's a serious rift, ideological and 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 and, and policy rift between the the brother and sister is on foreign policy. You see, I mean, Marcos oh. heads the Foreign Affairs Committee, and from what mm -hmm. I understand, because I saw pro BBM people were tagging me on on Twitter, in invita pa si Saso to give a to give a, I don't know, testimony, whatever, there in, in Senate. No. So clearly, I think IME is much more comfortable with the Sasot way of thinking or Tatai way of thinking about these things than, than, than with where, where the Philippines is heading under BBM, which is much more towards traditional allies, etc. So I think on foreign policy, Lelo, you know, I think there is some serious uh, disagreement there. And Ami Marcos sounds very like more sophisticated version of Duterte on foreign policy than, than, than BBM was being much more balanced and much more appreciative uh, and restorative towards our allies. But what I want to add here, bro, is this. There's going to be midterm elections in 2025. If Ami Marcos tops that, VP will be the least, least on her list. And probably she'll even consider running for the president. My mm. sense is part of Ami wants to run for the president, really. Now, parang she feels this is, she deserves this way more than, well, you know, right? And, and, kaya nga mahalaga to. Kaya nga mahalaga yung mga movies na lumalabas ngayon. Itong may din, ah, mal, malak, malakanyang, and then, ano, murderer, martyr, mga ganyan, ganyan. Uh, so, this is part of a very systematic, not very sophisticated, but systematic communications campaign that could be related to, you know, a bid for the highest office down the road. I know it sounds crazy, but crazy always happens in the Philippines. So I'm not going to dismiss it, bro. Uh, you tell me. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm front runner. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I still idol Rafi. Oh, yeah. 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 And otherwise, the front runner is still Tulfo. Yeah. And he's been picking really good fights. I, I mean, picked picked a fight with Cynthia Villar, picked a fight with Bato, whatever. So, come, bro. Actually, so, I mean, when we, say, when, we, when we say that, I mean, I think we're just saying that she has ambition 
and that there's a part of her that really feels like she deserves to be in Malacanang and feels way like more than bong, you know bongets can, bongets can do it i should be able to do it too but uh, you know i think that's that's highly un, highly unlikely at this point um pero yeah important to mga movies ato because uh, of yung, yung nga, we have a our historiographical battles now are of course not going to be played out in the realm of academic discourse right so uh-huh. Grabe nga ngayon, di ba? If you look at the the recent the the, the recent month and da- months and daming librong lumabas about martial law and the Marcoses. Um and then of course a certain intellectual class will gravitate towards these books, a certain intellectual and I contributed yeah. to these books myself. Pero hindi ako maasa that these books are the ones that are going to yeah, it's the movies. Turn aside, right? It, yeah. it's the movies The and it's the bloggers. And the reason why we do these books and the reason why we write these books is not because we expect na, you know, ito yung magiging, ito yung magiging front line ng debate. Uh, we do these books in the hopes na people will pick them up and then yeah. use them. And then... You and know, set the but, parameters. And the set the parameters. Those books to set the kind of parameters. Of more, right. Correct. I like that. Set the parameters of more popular discourse. Pero itong popular discourse, dito talaga, dito talaga na, 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 nangyayari ang banga yan. Ngayon, ang problema na ikita ko dito sa mga sila na to is, of course, parang ano na siya eh. What, parang naging, naging debate na yung mga sila. It's like the pro-Marco side and the anti-Marco side. And of course, pag ganun na yung hatian mo, wala nang nuance. And of course, the best movies are are nuance. Like, speaking right. of Nino Aquino, bro, I still think, you know, in my other podcast, si Carlos Santiago is always saying na, we need to have a Nino Aquino biography. Na, na matalagang biography. solid. Na, na talagang solid. At chan- na matalagang guha level. At saka maganda yung pagka- pagkakagawa. Like, I was just reading the other day, Um, Jose Abueva's political biography of Ramon Magsaysay. Yes, I know that. Like balanced, intellectual, cerebral, well-researched. Why can't we do that for 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 Aquino? Absolutely, absolutely. Is, you know, arguably, probably more influential, it has more influence in the history of the Philippines than even the great, you know, my guy, Ramon Magsaysay. Right, right. You're absolutely right. I agree. Actually, I I found that book by Abueva beautiful because he was part of the campaign, right? So you can see mm-hmm. the raw emotion there when he was writing this really beautiful biography, a kind of passionate but scholarly bi- biography of of Magsaysay. And and you're absolutely right. I mean, for me, my hope is what we'll have is Ramachandra Goa level, right? I mean, like if you look at uh, Ramachandra's uh, writings on on Gandhi, they're just brilliant and and beautiful and. And as I said recently, I wrote a piece about these parallels I see between what's happening to uh, to Gandhi in in India and also to Nino in the Philippines. Because if you look at the case of India, for a long time Gandhi was under attack by the left, you know, the Naxalites, the Marxists in you know in 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 southern India. And their argument was that Gandhi was never really a real revolutionary. He just hmm. gave a kind of a radical twist to the caste. I mean, the more traditional thinking about in India. The culture, then of course yes. there's accusation. kind of feudalism because he was exactly. tapping kind of native which culture. is the Perry Anderson thesis in his great book Indian Ideology you may agree it weird or not but it's a brilliant book I really suggest to for you to read I mean if, if you don't read you know the Pangaj Mishra types at least read the Perry Anderson one so the attack on uh, on on Gandhi from the left is not something new what Ramachandra is saying what is new is attack now from the more mainstream political populist forces. You can guess who are this. I mean, we know who's the prime minister now of India, right? And now they're even, you know, trending, uh, you know, uh, like every year there's a trending Twitter for the person who assassinated him, right? Mm. So there's there's a celebration of the more far-right kind of figures, etc. And, and, you know, there are attacks on Gandhi as not being true revolutionary. What he did was he gave too much rights to minorities at the expense of the Hindu majority. You know, and I felt mm. that's, That's fascinating. And, and so Ramachandra is uh, saying this as someone who, who had a brilliant biography of Gandhi. I see a lot of parallel with the Philippines because isn't that exactly what's happening also with Ninoy right now? He's being attacked as opportunist, as communist, as traidor, whatever. Uh, and, and people are blaming him for everything that went wrong with, with the liberal democracy. And as Ramachandra correctly put, was put it, the reason Gandhi is being attacked is because of the failure of the Congress party, which is supposedly the inheritor of the Gandhian, uh, you know, democracy or vision of democracy. Uh, and I see the same thing with, you know, the so-called liberals in the Philippines. They kind of gave it a bad name. But one big difference within Nino's case and Gandhi is that Gandhi has a whole body of literature, brilliant biography of him, very intimately, beautifully written. But I was looking for a counterpart to Nino, no offense, huh? 
No offense, I cannot see anything at the same level, bro. I, I, bro you, wala, wala, wala. You're the historian, bro. What's going on? What's the, what's the problem? Why don't you have a decent... He's a fascinating, complex character. Diba? He's very complex. So he's mm. perfect for a biography. You tell me, bro. You're the historian. Uh, I don't know. Feel ko, yung, yung the family is, of course, very protective of the legacy. Ah, and those, I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah. is coming out of the family, like yung I Am Ninoy, and then eventually the, the I Am Cory Foundation, and then that documentary about Ninoy na si Bampa yung gumanap kay Ninoy at one point, diba? Remember that? I think yeah, that was called right. of Ninoy. And then, and then ngayon, I haven't seen this new film itong I Am Ninoy, but I, I suspect I'm that it Ninoy, yeah, roughly yeah. goes to yung kind of family version of the history. And I, I, don't, I don't begrudge the family for wanting to tell their story. Like, sure. that's, yeah, you should, you know, if you, you, you have a family, different. you want to tell your story and, you know, disclosure, parang, di na, I, I'm, 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 a little bit part of the family because um si senator yung lolo ko first cousin niya si Nino Aquino really he, i didn't know that wow that's, yeah. oh wow so i i don't begrudge that in, in fact you know like um yung kapatid ng lolo ko si lolo ko si former senator Eva Estrada Calao um when i used to go to oh, her yeah, house yeah, yeah, i used to visit yeah. her all the time she had so many documents about Nino her cousin there right um, and trying to collect some of those documents and hand them over right. to you know and then you know for some reason nawala yung mga dokumento na hindi ko na mahanap ang ngayon because this is the thing with you know large families people yeah. take things from, from your house but actually you know side story i found yung ano yung yung minutes when they were planning yung arrival ni ni Nino yon in 83 yung notebook you know, right. Ninoy arrives China Airlines flight ganyan in, in my lola Eva's handwriting ganyan and then kalagi doon and then and then, and then I told Lola, parang, Lola, you keep this. We're going to give this to Bam. And then pagbalik ko na wala. Oh, right, 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 right. Anyway, anyway but parang, parang, so yeah. So I guess like, you know, I'm not going to begrudge the family for tell, t- telling that story. You know, my family is part of that story also. Um, Yung last letter ni, ni, ni Ninoy Aquino, one of his last letters, yung Dear Prima letter, where, where he explains his vision for the country. The Prima being addressed there is his first cousin, um, Eva Estrada Calo, his sister, okay. my grand. I Lola, see. Eva. So, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm, I don't begrudge that. But still, you know, if a family is tell, telling the story, there's a lot of sentimentalism there. And of course, there are certain things that you don't... And defensiveness. Sure. And defensiveness. Oh, and certain defensiveness. And, you know, understandable to be defensive these days. Because yung, yung lolo nyo, yung tatay nyo, totoo naman bayani. I, I, you know, I'll say this, like, bayani yeah. talaga. Bayani yeah. talaga. Yeah. I don't think, that, there's no debate think, about that. Exactly. We can debate that, guys. But the people, yung, yung bayani na yun, sinasabi ng mga tao na parang try door ganyan, and of course, you're going to be defensive. But And, and so, so the family is not going to be able to come up with that biography. But you know what? I think what a, what a good balanced biography of Aquino does is that it in fact proves the bayani siya. Because like, if somebody like me, I, I mean, you know, if somebody like me, I don't want to talk about myself, pero just, just as an example, if somebody like me who clearly is an anti-communist who does not like the Communist Party of the Philippines, comes up with research, more research, showing that Aquino definitely, definitely helped fund the Communist Party of the Philippines. And I walk away saying, this guy is still a hero. I think that's that's more, more powerful. Yeah, more compelling. Somebody, more compelling than somebody from the family saying that, you know, the guy's a hero, right? So, I know, I know. so that's what a good biography will do because it will go through that past. And this guy has a really sordid and seedy past. I mean, the stuff I heard, like, is not fit. The stuff I've heard about him off the record from people who were close to him when I was doing interviews with former communists. I mean, you know, just like it's not for, I, 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 it's, it's, it's not, it's not for, for public. public. Oh, public. Oh, 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 but some of it is like really nasty. And yet I really still walk away thinking this guy's a hero. Yeah, okay. Ako, the way I put it, it is I call it the maleficence, uh, maleficent genre, right? Like you know, like uh, ano yun, ano yun? like a semi anti hero that in the end is still admirable, right? Someone complicated, or 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 I rather put it at, as a kind of Nick Joaquin esque um, a question of hero, right? Uh, I think we can have a new version of a question of heroes, Alan Nick Joaquin, and then discuss our 20th century, 21st century. As speaking of which, uh, I know the closest thing you have to a good biography of Aquino, Aquino of Tarla. By Nick Joaquin. Ah, uh, exactly. That only covers exactly. until the 70s. Exactly. So. so that's it. I mean, for me, my approach to Nino would be, uh, you know, I'll call it the question of heroes approach, right? For me, I think, for me, what makes Nino very inspiring is the redemption 
Not, mm -hmm. not that he was ever saint, because as you know, uh, I interviewed for his movie, I see uh, Vince Taniada. Of course, we discussed about his, you know, his work with the family, how we came up with the script and all. He said, Sinabi na, on the record yan, di ba? Oh, naman, may pagkatrapo side naman yung younger years niya, di ba? Like, he was the youngest, among the youngest senators, etc. He was highly ambitious. But for me, what makes him really special is how yung arc of redemption niya, how in his more mature years and twilight years, you really see a sincere transformation. Transfer, transformation. Now, of course, I know you're, you're, you're not a religious, pious person, but for me, I appreciate also his piety because that was for me. I saw it as a as a humility on his part, not the opposite that we know. A kind of surrender, you know. Exactly, in, in exactly. Exact, sweet surrender, surrender, exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah. And that that got cut me. Like there's something something special is happening here. And you know, of course, his final hours before he was assassinated, he almost had a you know deja vu, or he almost had the premonition of that. And you know, I, I actually got a message from someone who was there in the airplane. Uh, and and I wrote something about Nino, and he really appreciated it. And so this person knew Nino. He was with Nino until his last moment, literally, and was with Nino throughout that fateful flight. And you could see he had rosary in his in his hands. So I don't think that show that's not, that's performed. I think he was really. Sure. I call it the Mandela. How can it be show? Kung alam mo, pwede kang mamatay. Yeah, exactly. May rap na ba? Yeah, exactly. Sinugal mo na yung buhay mo in front of everyone else. Hindi na show yun. And and paano natin alam na sinugal yung buhay niya? Eh, patay siya. Diba? And it parang, gruesome, gru gruesome, gruesome way, right? Yeah. Diba? Parang sasabihin niya, ah, ano lang yun, pretense lang yun, nagkukunwari lang siya na sinusugal niya buhay. Eh, ulul ba kayo? Pinatay, namatay siya eh. So obviously, totoo. <laughs> hindi naman niya, hindi naman siya, ano, gino, ano sa tingin mo, siya yung nagplant ng killer? <laughs> Grabe naman. That was really so, parang, Diba? Parang, and th th there's an interview there. Diba? Yung interview yung nasa aeroplano siya, diba? At in-interview siya ng journey. Sabi niya, you, be you, bet you better be ready with your handheld camera because It's, things will happen. Like, the, the, the next thing you know, I may not be talking to you anymore. Bumps, so, yeah. somebody is going home knowing that he could well die and he still goes home anyway because he believes he has something to contribute. What's that? I mean, that... If you don't call that here... Ako hindi ko kaya gawin yun. I mean... Very few. Yeah, next Honest. level, bro. Yeah. Next level. Yes, I'll go Pilipinas, pero hindi ko uuwi ako knowing that there's like what a 50% chance na more than bago mag yeah. baba more than 50% chance bago makababa. Yeah. Tinira na ako. Hindi ko gagawin 'yun. I love my life, man. Like and I'm afraid of death. So, I mean, seriously, Next the guy's a hero. If only for that one. I mean, he he's the, he he did many other things apart from that one moment. Pero, pero partida na even if you tell me that everything before that was kind of trapo which I even that I disagree with right pero partida na even if you tell me that everything before that was trapo just that one moment nagpakamatay ka para sa bayan tapos na tapos ang basketball yeah. you're a hero that's it. yeah mic drop that's like the ultimate wow. mic drop now so having established more or less that he was a hero that of course we can go on and on about this but my point is obviously we have no disagreement in that I think we fundamentally agree he had this moment of redemption more than any Filipino perhaps in the 20th century. Now, Rizal would be the man for perhaps for his century. But let's go to the earliest years. Okay, not the things that you cannot say in public, but what can we, as, as a historian, what is the established or reasonable way of describing his younger years? It, I, said, I remember you said something like, hindi ba gawain ng lahat yan? Si tatay rin, di ba? Kausap niya yung left and sa bundok, tapos ba ako siya, kausap niya yung military, di ba? Like, Marcos, you know, was had like folks talking to the Soviet Union, then we reach out to Mao. I mean, it's like, Gawain ng lahat yan eh. I call it the Peronism yeah. style, no? From the yeah, center yeah. you play with all. That was like standard operating procedure for any ambitious guy, right? Ambitious politician, right? You tell me, bro. You're the historian. Yeah, yeah. Pero pero actually, speaking of tatay, speaking, yung, yung, I was talking to a journalist in the news na kinover si Duterte nung, nung years niya as a Young. mayor. Inquire siya. And then, nag-move siya to Minda News after yung, yung kind of... Nakilala ko yung scene yun. I know who you're talking about. But yeah, go uh, ahead. Yeah, yeah. I know And sabi niya talaga, yung strategy ni Digong na yon na talking to the left, talking to the right, talking right. to everyone, talagang intentionally modeled yon after Aquino. Hindi yun, oh. hindi yun coincidence. Idol talaga niya si Aquino. Intentionally modeled yon. Wow! So like, gold standard si Aquino. Oh. 
to oh, the left, okay. to the right. Oh, yeah, I call it Peronismo. Oh, well, Peron oh. was the first one who did it really at the next level. Sa team si tatay, tatay, for union. Yeah. Pero sa team mo si tatay, inaaral niya yung buhay ni Peron. Hindi. Si, local lang inaaral ni tatay. Si Ninoy. So talaga tayo mo, oh, I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. Don't do that to tatay. Tatay <laughs> actually was, I mean, come on. I heard from that the same source oh. you're talking about. I know this person. Actually, oh. sinabi niya, he would talk dialectics. He gave well, that's, dialectics that's to reporters. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Pero, 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 pero sa tingin ko, pero oh, I think it's more than like local politicians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right. You're right. You're right. Local politics. Yeah, yeah. So, right. dalawa daw, idol ni tatay nung mga panahon, si FVR tsaka si Ninoy. Hindi daw talaga mga idol. FVR makes sense too. FVR oh. makes Actually, FVR is, for me, one of the best, you know, again, by Philippine low standards of presidency, but God bless <laughs> his soul. Going back to this, so, so, Tell us a little bit about Nino. Like, what what is going on in his younger years, in his 20s? So, I think, you know, yung, yung closest analog to Nino Aquino, and and they knew this, both, both Marcos and Nino knew this, was, was Ferdinand Marcos. Parang U, yeah. UP, UP hotshot, local politics, strong local roots, di ba? From si Marcos, North, si Nino, uh, and then hawak talaga nila yun. Charismatic politicians, guapo, both dated Imelda, Imelda Romualdez, di ba? Oh, Rosa. Oh, yeah, that was a creepy, okay, yeah. That, that was like yeah, weird. Diba? Thing, yeah. Ro- Rosa, Rosa up the ranks re- re- really quickly from local to national and then kind of considered boy wonders because they were they were just smarter than everyone else. They were more charismatic than everyone else. And obviously, they were very at home in the milieu of post-war Philippine politics. They, they, they're, they're the two people who kind of really own, who grew up in the system of post-war Philippine politics. Because the presidents before them, they're, they're in many ways caught in two worlds. Parang one foot nila is in the world of Quezon and Osmeña. Eh, diba? that, 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 pre- that rivalry, yeah. Yeah, pero ito si Nino at si Marcos, they, their, their, their feet are firmly played, uh, placed in the post-war milieu and they master it, right? And they, and, they, and they know this. And that's why the rivalry is so intense because they see each, they see each other, they see themselves in each other. And you know, tawag pa nila sa isa't isa si Brad, di ba? Because pareho silang up si Lonyan. Right. And so, you know, meron may, ang sense sila na, you know, whatever it takes to get to the prize um and the prize was and of only course one, the president and only one can and, win and, and only and the, one and the, king. the initial galit talaga ni Aquino kay Marcos was really eh brad na komo na eh bakit mo babakuran there are people there are people waiting diba so exactly. ako na mo ako, ako dapat yung next it, 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 it's really supposed Simple to be that. Yeah. And so in a sense that's why he becomes the head of the opposition that's why he's willing to do anything to essentially you know become to become president and that's why for example um si commander dante buscaino right um head of the npa so yung cpp in the late in the yung, yung maui cpp in the mid to late 60s wala namang army yan di ba right they're just a bunch of students from up who are very idealistic but they're students they don't know how to fight a war so they need an army and so Senator, uh, well, Senator na ba siya? So Aquino comes to them and introduces them to his friend, Bernabe Buscaino, who is a former hook. And Aquino is very close to the hook rebels. Right, right. So he introduces, this is according to, this is according to testimony from Dante. Uh, right. Dante himself, na quote siya sa isang US newspaper. Na sa Hacienda Luisita, pinakilala ni, ni, ni Aquino, si Dante, kay Jose Maria Season. So effectively, yung CPP-NPA, yung dash na yun, you want to think about the connecting dash between the CPP and NPA. In many ways, that's Aquino. Right, uh, and right, was that right. Was to do anything to 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 undercut Marcos up to and, in support, up to and including supporting a kind of military ins, uh, a military insurrection um, against him? And then yung nahanap ko sa State Department documents is that sobrang, sobrang angas ni Aquino that he even bragged about this to the Americans. I mean, it's crazy, like the anti-communist yeah. Americans. Right? Wow. And Aquino waltzes into the embassy and says, you know, actually, I'm very close to the communists. And, you know, if we if they want to take over and they're proposing to me that um, if we beat Marcos, that we will have some kind of power sharing agreement between Aquino, between me yeah. and, and yeah. communists in the mountains. Ganon ka ang si Aquino about it. So, so was it grandiosity? That, was it yeah. some sort of complex there, or did he really have a leverage there? Did he have really leverage? Hindi ko alam. Hindi ko alam why would until now that's the mystery to me, de Because that was a State Department document, de ba? Why yeah, would he classify? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would he waltz into the U.S. embassy, talk to U.S. embassy officials, 
And because saying, inevitable, uh, because the U.S. is the big brother, he, you have to. Yeah, but, but he's saying he's working with communists, right? And you tell you say this to you know the most anti-communist. Well, when is this again? Uh, 1970. Because remember, bro, this is the Nixon era, isn't it? This is when Nixon yeah, is to, to to. You know, because for me, it makes sense if this is the Nixon Mao era of this is where when Kissinger is reaching out to Zhou and Lai and all. So U.S. was not monolithic too, right? They were also playing their own, you know. Uh, they were also waltz waltzing with some communists against the That's big right. communist threat, right? Which is the Soviet Union. So I don't know. For me, I think Aquino being a smart 1970, guy. 1970, 1972, Brad. Um, oh, bro, so exactly. This is the Mao Nixon the taunt era. So Come here, on. Here's the here's the quote yeah. in private from from that. This is a telegram by U.S. Ambassador Henry Byro to the State Department, and he says in private conversations with two embassy officials. September 12, 1972. Senator Aquino said that, that on September screen, 7. Bro? You want to put that on the screen? Uh, you can screen share that. Padala ko na lang sa iyo yung yung ito yung ito yung document ko that's gotten me oh, into so much. I can, I can make problems. it close. Uh, this is for purpose of those people who are watching us. Um Sige, there. Ito to to. Yeah, you want to put it on the screen? Yeah, yeah. Bigyan ng link sa iyo. Or you can just screen share, bro. Yeah, yeah, Okay. The mount yeah. So, anyway, In private conversations with two embassy officials, ah, yeah, yeah. Um, Nina network with everyone. He has met with Season and several other mem other members of ah, the I Communist think Party. Like the oh, okay. Committee. Yeah. So in a suburban house in Makati, at that meeting he was presented with a proposal to join. Right. Let's see. To join broad opposition, a broad opposition part of the Liberal Party (CPPML). Right. And other radical groups. He did agree, however, to provide the CPPML with statement of broad program of broad of, of principles on which he invited their comments with with which he established the basis for further further future cooperation. So here's this guy, yeah, going to the U.S. embassy saying I'm co like I'm trying to establish future That's cooperation. That's crazy, right? It's like, lakas ng loob. Audacity. 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 Oh. Yeah, audacity. That's the perfect term for that. Well, that well, in a way, aren't heroes also anti-heroes or just like audacious, crazy guys at some point, right? At, until they mature. I remember Carl Jung said something like, "Ego is the royal road to enlightenment," right? So like, like Carl Jung comes to my mind, like that audacity, yabang, and then at some point he goes into the spiritual transformation. See, I already have a. If you want to write a biography, I'm already giving a. Arc of how to put it, Arc, Carl Jung, oh. right? The royal road, you know, ego is the royal road to you know to enlightenment. So, pero Brad, alam mo yung you know I think na you know na pagtanto ko. We we we're very you know we don't necessarily think that the family version of history should should be the end all and be all. Pero yung arc naman ng family history, tama naman yun eh. Yung ina ap, tama naman yun na meron siya meron siyang ambitious may nagsimula siya an ambitious politician, nagkaroon siya ng spiritual conversion, nagpakamatay siya para sa bayan. That essential art is true. Is is a hundred percent true, de ba? Absolutely. It's the details that will di diverge. Yeah. yeah. So, you, just to wrap up this episode, because we can go on forever. I'm sure the Nino issue will come out later. In fact, perhaps we can do an episode of Marcos Nino, kind of a, uh, the whole Batman Joker, whatever you want to put it there, juxtaposition there, or Batman Superman. No, I mean going back to this. Um, what what is your understanding of? Okay, how can you make? I don't. I don't want to use the word cool again. But how can you make the new generation? How do you think? What What is the best way for the new generation to truly appreciate the legacy of Ninoy, so that we can have someone like Ninoy for the 21st century? We had Rizal for the 19th century. We had Ninoy for the 20th century. I think our country definitely needs at least one version of that for the 21st century, right? If our country is going to have any chance to move in the right direction, or maybe you don't believe in heroism at all. You don't think we really need it for for this century. I don't. You tell me. I'm just thinking like okay oh, ko alam. this is it ko now alam. how do we move forward for the first yeah pwede mo na ka pwede mo na ka so yeah i mean i i actually you know the, the, i wrote something about this diba dun sa sa column ko um because you know i was quoting uh Ramachandra Guha diba who said that you know um if if you look at it for him he said the desertification of gandhi has been aided by the hypocrisy and misconduct of the congress party which is the closest analog to our liberal party no mm -hmm. which dominated indian politics throughout the post war periods even as their quote politicians ostentatiously wore homespun cotton while promoting cronyism and corruption 
So, I mean, as I argued, well, Ninoy is being unfairly blamed for all the shortcomings of countless self-described liberal politicians who perpetuated a culture of incompetence and corruption while singing praises for that kind of family. You can just name people. I'm not going to do that. So, and this is why my argument is thus to fight this information and to honor Ninoy's legacy, it is first and foremost important to discard the very elements that undermine the Filipino people's faith in liberal democracy and what Ninoy stands for. And the best way to fight this information is to acknowledge widespread disenchantment with deracinated liberal elites and reverse decades long political adulteration of Ninoy's ideological legacy. Thus, beyond toxic self-righteousness and election result denialism, what we need is a genuinely progressive movement for democratic transformation. I'm not sure I'm really answering here, but I'm at least giving a general view <laughs> of where we... I mean, I'm not answering in terms of tactics. Bro, bro, na, bro ang galing mo, ha? Kasi yung peroration mo, ang ganda-ganda ng ending, pero you still found a way para makabanat sa, sa Google Trends. <laughs> No, come on, bro. No, they're not that important. Election bro. denialism, effectively. No, bro, no, mo na naman na Google Trends bro, bro, I have friends. I have very close friends of mine. I have an awkward time dealing with them because whenever BBM comes up, suddenly it goes into like, hindi naman nanalo yan. Eh. And then I have to start. I mean, like, let's not just talk about it. So, so no, this is not about this person and that person. I'm having an issue with some very good friend of mine who I've been good friends of. Uh, we have been good friends. These are US-based friends of ours. Filipino na, you know, they're very invested in strong alliance and pushing back against China. But this denialism thing, uh, this analytics, blah, blah, it's creating problem for me even with some of my good friends. So, major yeah, personal na siya sa akin. No, major personal nga rin sa akin. So, actually, I pointed that out diba? because... I, I don't know how to answer your question either, pero I know where to begin, which is, kailangan merong realism. Kailangan hindi pwedeng hero worship. Hindi pwedeng worship. Hindi, hindi mo, i, ibang bayani sa Diyos. So, hindi, you can't worship Aquino. Um, and then, of course, you need to be able to live also in the gray areas, even as you re recognize your ultimate principles. Because if we don't live in the gray areas, then we just place ourselves into silos and everybody thinks we're, right. we're super unreasonable. Um, and and this this has to include like giving credit where credits due and criticizing ourselves when when we yeah. make mistakes and of course criticizing our heroes when they make mistakes. So that's that's the blueprint essentially a kind of a kind of uh, a, a kind of independent thought that is still grounded in ultimate principles. So yeah. I don't know if that makes Aquino cool, but that definitely makes. Um, I mean, like, cool is a little yeah, bit that uh, more reasonable. Yeah, exactly. I mean, a fair appreciation of the uh, 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 martyr's legacy. Uh, Ikaw, do you have an advice on a closing note? Do you have an advice to whoever is going to be the biographer of Ninoy? Like, what, what, what is your advice as a historian uh, in terms of what is a legit Ninoy biography is going to look like? And maybe if you have an advice to the Aquino family, you know, because who knows? Maybe they're also listening to us. You never know, right? Uh, I got to know apparently an Aquino grandson is teaching in UP right now in Paul State Department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no idea and, about and, and that. Of course, and then of course, technically, technically, you know, Aquino grandsons are my, my or my third co third cousins. Oh, exactly. Um, Here you go again, um, right? um, You never know. Maybe so, they're listening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What's your advice no, as a, as a historian, aside from being there, relative. there, there are there are examples of authorized biographies that are nevertheless even handed. So. I mean, if the Aquino family really wanted to and 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 really want, I think that it really want to kind of cement the legacy of of this hero, they should really commission an independent biography. So yeah. nila it is yeah. what it is. Get somebody who is somebody who is fair. Because yeah. all you need all you need is to get some uh, give them the materials and then find someone who's fair. Because I think anybody who's fair will come to the conclusion that we we came up with, which is he's a hero. Yeah. Now they might the the family might feel uncomfortable with the way this person gets to that ultimate truth. Correct. And Correct. They should Correct. I think they should live with that discomfort because ultimately any fair-minded biographer who is rigorous Correct. will ultimately state that truth that this guy is a hero. Yeah. And we should live with the discomfort of the fact that getting to that heroism was a very um you know was. A, very, a lot of zig um, and a lot of zag. zag. Yeah, a lot of zig and a lot of zag. We thought exactly the same. A lot of zig yeah. and a lot of zag. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Leila. I really appreciate it. I think this is an episode that was, you know, was really in the making. I think that and the time has come, I think, in the context of the EDSA commemoration. Just a short thought, Stin. What do you think about the reaction of Bombo Marcus Jr.? Were you surprised or pleasantly surprised? You know, sending a wreath, 
saying all that unity thing like or now he was just being safe and all of that so Wait, let's, you know, Nagula, were you the one who was who was telling me that there were some people who thought like you know hindi hindi malayo sa hindi malayo na he might even lead the Edsa Day ce- celebration diba as an act yeah, of unity yeah yeah, yeah 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 there were some people who were saying that diba that that would have been the maximalist version of that so so i i was surprised i was surprised. He went, yeah he went kind of for the middle approach again very bbm no very very bbm not surprised at all thank you very much bro uh, i hope this will just the beginning of more real scholarship and discussion on ninoy because i think Nino's legacy is still living with us and it still can live. And the reason I talk about it that is because recently Anwar Ibrahim no, of Malaysia was also in the Philippines. He was in my college. He, we conferred a new honorary degree in him. And he's someone who's a, a Filipinist, right? He loves the Philippines. He knows a lot about Philippine history. He went to Rizal Luneta. He knows a lot about Nino. He called him a martyr. He wrote about him. So I don't know. I think this is the right time when even foreign leaders like the Prime Minister of Malaysia is someone who's very interested in the legacy of Nino. Yes. Maybe we should pay also more respect to our own heroes when foreign leaders are also doing that. And Anwar is someone who knows what he's talking about. He went through a lot before he became the prime oh, minister. God, yes, we yes. can have a different, whole different episode on that. And I hope, I hope a part of me hopes like Anwar Siguro told BBM, "Irilis mo na si Dalima, di ba? Parang yung nangyari, oh, yes, yes, parang yes, nangyari yes. sa akin eh, yung mga nonsense sodomy charges mga ganon." All right, bro. Let's keep it here because we have to do an episode also in Japan, secret history, film in Japan relations. We have to really do this pa- bago tayo mag, you know, ayo kasi ayo mas and <laughs> sayonara. Thank you very much, bro. Uh, talk to you soon. Cheers.